On the line with us is Gaius Publius, the uh, writer who goes by the name of Gaius Publius. Uh, You can find his writings all over the web. Facebook.com slash Gaius.Publius, P-U-B-L-I-U-S, is uh, a good start. And Gaius, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Great, great having you with us. You wrote a fascinating piece over at the Down With Tyranny blogs, dot blogspot.com site, and perhaps it's on others that you can tell us about, uh, titled Sinking the Sanders Campaign Beneath a Wave of Silence. Can you just lay out for us your, your uh, thesis in this and, and, the, um, and the evidence that you uh, uh, pulled together about why we shouldn't uh, uh, just why the media is stupid, essentially, to say that Bernie Sanders is some sort of a marginal or or, or cameo candidate? Well, uh, I would actually go further than say the media is stupid. I think they're complicit. I think they're deliberately tanking this campaign, and it's pretty obvious. You mentioned in, in an earlier segment of your show some of the ways that they're doing that, uh, page 821 for the Sanders announcement, for example, versus A1 above the fold for every other marginal Republican. And you're right that they'll probably tout the O'Malley uh, announcement as a big deal because of insiders and the New York Times supports insiders. The real danger of the Sanders campaign as I see it and I point out near the end of that article is that he actually could win because he's really the only one of the candidates on either side of the fence espousing real populist views. And he's getting a huge echo from Elizabeth Warren with the speeches that she's doing. And I suspect I'm starting to see the beginning of a Warren-Sanders tag team without either one of them acknowledging that they're doing that. They're starting to sync up in terms of the messaging. It's really going to be interesting. It's going to be Sanders versus the media. And it's ultimately, as it has been many times in our, in our recent past, the people versus the media to see if the people can get past that media bubble and and actually get a candidate they can vote for. Right. Now, you also talk about how we've seen the media take candidates down. Howard Dean was taken down. Uh, I thought, you know, just very, uh, just, it was just so wrong what they did. And and on the other hand, how the media have, have uh, defined candidates, Jimmy Carter, uh, Mike Dukakis, you've got a few other examples you, could, you can explain in more detail, how, how candidates who... Nobody thought they had a chance. You know, who is this guy? Where'd he come from? And, you know, in some cases, as in the case of Jimmy Carter, they ended up, and Bill Clinton, they ended up president of the United States. Yeah, I, I got the information from an article, a really good article at Columbia Journalism Review by Steve Hendricks, who has done a fair amount of research on this. And that was sort of the embedded data around which I, I made my points at Down With Tyranny. Carter started at 1% in uh, a year before, uh, right right before the primary, not right before, but a few months before the primaries. Dukakis started at 1% in the polls before the primaries. Obama was at 22 to 45 versus Clinton and almost no money. Sanders actually has more money versus Clinton now than Obama did in absolute dollars when Obama started. Of those four, Carter, Obama, and Bill Clinton, start, who started out as a long shot but then shot up pretty quickly, all of them were, were long shots early, and those are our last three Democratic presidents. I mean, this is an absolutely doable deal. I think I'm alone on the left in, well, I'm not alone because obviously you're with me, and there's a couple of others as well, in thinking that, A, Sanders can actually beat Clinton in the primary if they have a fair primary, which they won't, but even then he's got the people at his back. And he can actually beat, I mean, who in that clown car Republican uh, circus can actually take out a, somebody like Bernie Sanders, who's making points that even Republicans like? I mean, this is really going to be interesting. It really is. And I think, you know, if, if it's a Walker's Sandoval ticket or something like that, you know, a very strategic ticket that's put together and funded by the Koch brothers, that's going to be the big challenge. You know, if Bernie's not doing super PACs and he's not taking money from people. Well, I, you know, I, actually, there were, there were folks, in fact, I think um, uh, Paul Begala got roundly criticized for this. I remember running into him at, at one of the, um, um, uh, what do they call it, the, 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 the White House Correspondents' Dinners, and right after they had started attacking him for opening a super PAC to support Obama. Uh, it must have been for the re-election. And, uh, you know, it turned, it, it worked out. It wouldn't, su- wouldn't surprise me. I'm curious your thoughts on this. If Sanders, if, if Bernie gets some traction here, and if he's, he's starting to look good before the primary or if he wins the primary, if, 
he's unwilling to do a super PAC, but he can't stop somebody else from doing one. I mean, you could do one. Uh, yes, and uh, so is the question, should Bernie do a super PAC, or is it a vulnerability if he does a super PAC? Well, I, I think the, re the reality of our political era is that if you don't funnel at least a billion dollars through the media in order to run for president of the United States, the media will make sure that you don't yeah. win. And so somebody is going to have to spend a billion dollars on Bernie's behalf if he becomes the Democratic Party's nominee. Who is that going to be and how is it going to be done? Because Bernie has said he's not going to put together a super PAC. Uh, yes, and I think you're right. I think that there will be a super PAC. I personally know a number of the donors in the Democracy Alliance. I think that's something that you're familiar with. It's, yes. a, it's sort of a high-end group of uh, liberal uh, donors who have much resources. Some of these people have split off from D Democracy Alliance because the Democracy Alliance is, has become too centrist, too much like CAP, for example, to the left of CAP, but not far enough to the left of CAP, Center for American Progress. But some of those people have real resources and they're very accomplished people who know how to organize. I think there's a deep well of money in about 10% of the Democratic donor base wherewith Sanders can run a viable campaign. And believe me, that money doesn't have to match Clinton money. All he has to do is be viable and be as good as he always is on his message. He's great on his message. He's, yeah. he's strong when he talks. And that's, you know, let the people decide. The game is on. Let the people decide. Yeah. And then the other thing he's going to have to face is is a media that is far more interested in spectacle than in issues. I mean, I, 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 uh, uh, I haven't seen it printed anywhere, but Louise told me this morning that she believes that this Sunday Bernie's going to be on Meet the Press. Um, if that's the case, what do you want to bet that one of the first questions Chuck Todd asks is, uh, do you support rape? Uh, yes. And I saw an interview with him with Wolf Blitzer, who who Blitzer tried to pull him off message uh, toward a lot of stuff that was sort of sexier for TV. But of course, I, I consider that uh, TV is, is politically complicit. They're not accidentally complicit for ratings. I think they're deliberately also complicit. Right. So he's, he's had some practice at this, and he, he did a really nice job of pulling the conversation back to his message, and he's not naive about how to do that. I mean, you listen to the question, and then you give the answer you want to give. Yeah, yeah. Bernie's been a politician for 30 years. I would say he's been a statesman for 30 years, plus years. Yes. And yes. Uh, one of the few politicians in this country who actually are statesmen. And uh, I, I, you know, it, it, there's just echoes of Jimmy Carter, echoes of Bill Clinton. You know, who is that guy? Nobody knew him. Nobody knew what, you know. And, and Bill Clinton, if you go back, I, you know, I wrote about this in my book, Threshold. I reprinted Bill Clinton's uh, New Covenant, uh, his, which was his stump speech in his first, in his 92 election. And it was very, you know, it was a lot of it was Bernie's stuff. I mean, it was very, very populist. He did not govern that way. He basically, he, he won the election and then he kind of set that on the shelf and, and became this, you know, slightly yep. to the right of Dwight Eisenhower president. But... Um, which you could argue you had to do then, but I don't think you have to do that anymore. I think that we're at a populist moment in America, and I think the next president um, is really going to have to answer, whether it's the, the, the Rand Paul right or the Bernie Sanders left, if you want to call it that. I think it's all, I think that's America now. He's going to have to answer to we the people. Yes. Gaius Publius, writer who goes by the name of Gaius Publius, you can read his stuff over at Down With, his most recent pieces at the downwithtyranny.blogspot.com blog. Uh, sinking the Sanders campaign beneath the wave of silence. Thanks for dropping by today. A pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Always great, Tom.